we're gonna put this book, the Essene Gospel of Peace. The Essene Gospel of Peace. Prove that um, Paul, who was a big writer of the New Testament, used word for word what's in the Essene Humane Gospel. We're putting just his little twist on it. But uh, without sitting here wasting any time, I just want to verify that Paul by name calls out the Essene Gospel of Peace. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 15. That is Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 15. Paul says this. Mind you, we're reading the Essene, Gospel of Peace, right? And this is Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 15. And it reads, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, right before the line, we can even start over here. This is chapter 6, verse 11 through 15. Put on the whole armor of Allah, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of Allah that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Boom. Now, let's go to another testimony. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Romans chapter 10 verse 15 Romans chapter 10 verse 15 King James Version of the Holy Bible and it reads and I'm going to start at 14 how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, right? Right, now. A lot would like to say, oh, you know, uh, well, that was written over there in, in Isaiah 52, seven. You know where he says, how beautiful on the mountains of the are the feet of him that brings good tidings, that publishes peace, that bring good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that says unto Zion, your Allah reigns, right? It publishes peace. This is the gospel of peace. And we know he's bringing the gospel of peace. But let's go. Because I'm going to be quick. And I want to read off to you something. In uh, 1 Corinthians, come with me to 1 Corinthians. 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I'm going to show you how Paul used the entire verse. Now, let, let me get this straight. Messiah or Yeshia, we don't call him that J word. We're not calling him any other name. His name is Yeshia. We can prove that too. Now, he takes all of Yeshia's. Now, mind you, the Essenes had already been, this had already been rotation. The Essenes are the one who wrote the Bible. Now, when you read the Gospel of Peace, you're actually reading what was used back in these historic times. So Paul, he knew that this writing existed, and he knew the name that it was called the Gospel of Peace. He knew this, that this uh, published peace had existed. Now, so let's go, come with me over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 1, and I'm going to read the whole chapter off to you. Then after that, I'm going to read you from the gospel of peace, because we know ignorance must come before knowledge comes. Now here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. 
Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Her will, her, seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they will fail. Whether there be tongues, they will cease. Whether there be knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know even as I also I but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abide the faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now let's go and actually see in the Essene Gospel of Peace, page 14, in the Essene Gospel of Peace, where Paul actually plagiarized this from or took this writing from. Now this is Yeshia's word, the Messiah, the anointed one's words. And, he's, and it reads, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. Though I tell what is to come, and know all secrets and all wisdom, and know I have faith strong as the storm, which lifts mountains from their seat, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and give all my fire that I have received from my father, but have not love, I am in no wise profited. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious, works not evil, knows not pride, is not rude, neither selfish, is slow to anger, imagines no mischief, rejoices not in injustice, but delights in justice. Love defends all, love believes all, love hopes all, love bears all, never exhausts itself, but as for tongues, they shall cease. And as for knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we have truth in part and error in part. But when the fullness of perfection is come, that which is in part shall be blotted out. When a man was a child, he spoke as a child, understood as a child, thought as a child. But when he became a man, he put away childish things. For now we see through a glass and through dark sayings. Now we know in part. But when we are come before the face of Allah, we shall not know in part, but even as we are taught by him, and now remain these three, faith and hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. 